Welcome, my beautiful people. Welcome to Harry's Healing Center. Today, we're going to talk about how you can change your mindset. We want to look at what your mindset is, maybe what has led to this mindset, and then how you can change it. I also wanted to tell you that it's a very, very good time to connect to the Alps. This energy is incredible. It is very healing. It is very protective. And my guides have been talking to me about doing this on a regular basis. Every time that you call in protective energy, visualize yourself standing either on top of those mountains or maybe inside the mountain anywhere that you'd like to place yourself where you will feel most comfortable because that is usually a good indication as to the energy source that you personally need to connect to. I thought I'd share this thought with you because this channel is all about healing and learning methods to heal yourself and starting small and building up your practice is going to be highly beneficial for you. But now let's go to your choices, how you can change your mindset. Here we go. Welcome group number one. Let's see what mindset are you stuck in at the moment. Okay, your mindset is actually not too bad. In this card here, when I pick up this card, what I see is that you have a great awareness of things and you're also very capable of expanding this awareness. So you're not just stuck on one thing and can't move on from that. So this is good. Let's see where this will lead us because the reading is all about changing that mindset. But the first card indicates that you're doing really, really well. But in this card, transformation, I do see that there is an energy that has infiltrated this mindset and is blocking the progression, positive advancement, awareness. There's something or someone, I do feel it's someone who is blocking this. Let's have a look. So initially, look just looking back at this, initially your entry onto this planet was always meant to achieve something great. Whatever you put your focus to, you're meant to achieve it in a in a fairly large way. But then you have this negative energy around you that um, that is causing you issues. Let's see. Let's see who or what this is. Yeah, look at that. We're going to compare two of these flowers coming out. One is really big and it's got a lot of petals, a lot of different things to it. But look at the other one. It's getting smaller. So this is exactly what we're talking about. Your mindset, because you have a lot of knowledge, wisdom and understanding... But looking at this butterfly with the darker edges here, this is somebody that has influenced your mindset and now it's looking a little bit different. It's still good, but nowhere near where it could be. So who is this or what is this? Let's talk a little bit more about this mindset and whoops, what have they done? Okay, your worthiness. This is all about your worthiness. They have put some kind of unworthy aspect inside your mindset. So you're not believing in yourself. You might have had trauma 
and this is affecting your mindset. We want to learn a little bit more about this mindset. I am here to tell you, group number one, that you have an incredible wisdom. In whatever field you're going to go into, your wisdom is su surpassing everyone else's. Because you have this wisdom from past lifetimes. You've gained this. You've just got to tap back into it. Especially if this owl here, if this relates to spiritual wisdom, meditating, that is important. And if you listen to the beginning, the introduction of the video, I did mention connecting yourself to the Alps. Because that can be a protection for you. That can be very powerful if you do that each morning in meditation. It can be very quick. You don't have to spend lengthy times on meditating and placing yourself there. You can if you wish, but it's not necessary. It's your intention that will bring that energy into your field. So this is what you are needing to work on to Get this negative mindset that somebody has put in there saying that you are not worthy or you can't succeed. Let's find out a little bit more about what you can do about this. What can you do? Connecting with your guides more. Asking them to be part of your life. Looking for signs and listening to those signs. It seems like you need to get out of this belief system that maybe is a little bit too logical. Everything has to be logical or it can't work for you. Even in the unknown, there might be a little bit of fear because of this person or this situation that has caused this in your life. You are to free yourself from that, to embrace the unknown. Knowing that you have this intense wisdom and you need to tap into it. We're going to switch the cards and see what else comes out for group number one. I have great respect for you group number one because you have a power that is beyond anything that I have seen in a long time here in the cards. But the sad thing is that you haven't fully tapped into it yet. And I think this reading is here to tell you to do what you can to believe in yourself, to get rid of this mindset that somebody else pushed onto you where you feel unworthy. Let's find out more about you, perhaps more about your life. You have been placed in a slaves position and poverty mindset perhaps your upbringing was like that and you can relate to that you are not your upbringing you are not your surroundings you are so much more group number one you are an incredibly powerful being you have connection to source and the divine that is amazing but you may not realize this here is a reading that is simply meant to uplift your spirit to help you believe in yourself to forget what somebody perhaps said to you today, yesterday, the week before, that put you in a bad mood or that put you down. You are to be uplifted. This is your guides directly speaking to you and saying, do not listen to them because they got nothing on your wisdom. You are amazing. There's also um, love coming in. I want to find out a little bit more about love, whether this is past, whether this is present or future love. We want to find out maybe this love, maybe you've had toxic love in your life that has put you in a different place. But let's find out more about this love for group number one. It will be better if you make a decision there's an overanalyzing coming in. So in regards to love, a decision has to be made. 
this love can represent various things in your life and I can't tap into your particular situation but something about love something about making a decision which will help you as far as your mindset is concerned to project you forwards into this wisdom you've got to think of this is your main card here you got to think of that your wisdom in every choice that you make whether it's work related whether it's love related but particularly love we're talking about love here so this decision is important and whatever decision you're going to make it's got to be in harmony with your wisdom your wisdom can never be diminished it can never go down again it needs to increase this can mean that if you're thinking about a relationship how will this person fit in with your daily routines will they be supportive and if not what are you doing with them why do you want them why do you want to make your life more complicated this is the sort of energy but that can also relate to something else think carefully who you bring in and perhaps this love is somebody currently in your life who is disturbing this wisdom and you're in the process of thinking well am i going to stay with this person am i going to separate what am i going to do keep your wisdom in the first place here yeah? it's got to be in the forefront it can't be pushed back if you're taking this person and you're putting them first over your wisdom that's going to bring your wisdom down that is not beneficial for your soul you are to um, find somebody very trustworthy so these are loving connections in your life people that are trustworthy people that help you succeed maybe even financially but you are to find and attach yourself to these people because then you can become even more empowered you will find the time to fully connect to this wisdom of yours and not have it diminished many guides are waiting for you they're waiting right now for you to connect with them on deeper levels but they can only come in if you're making wise decisions in alignment with this wisdom and your future path so you've got many more guides that want to direct you and help you a little bit more healing is needed in the sense that you need to believe in yourself and there's also an indication of an end of a difficult situation in the future believing in yourself is highly important because we've seen your mindset has been pushed in a direction where you find that difficult but you need to rebuild it and this reading certainly is part of this to rebuild yourself to know that you are stronger than you realize and you have unique wisdom that many people just wish they could have that but you've got it let's finish off with these cards here always have a passion for this wisdom however you express it see it however it comes into your life but that's your passion don't put anything above this wisdom because this wisdom will lead you to many many good choices the wisdom will also help you go through challenges but the only way you can access the wisdom is by quietening that mind by releasing fear fear is a big blockage of wisdom once we can release the fear and we can be in a mindset of calm peace we're drawing in perhaps the angel of peace we're drawing in guides that can help us calm the mind 
that's when we can see the surface layer of this wisdom and draw on it when it comes to challenges. We're going to then release the challenges knowing intuitively what you need to do and then as you release challenges you can open this wisdom even more. There is a willingness needed to do that because sometimes it's challenging to make that decision where we feel that perhaps we have to go it alone for a little while before we meet these people that are actually very good for our energy. And that's okay, but we've got to be willing to do it. We might need to be willing to say goodbye to people or situations and then tap into the wisdom and then our energy is ready to receive good people. Really look inside. Really find a way to question yourself, your intentions. What direction are they leading you into? And if they're not leading you to this wisdom and wanting to pursue it with, with a very strong passion, then... Ask yourself, what's stopping me? What's holding me back? What can I do right now that will bring me closer to my goal and help me with my challenges? That is you, group number one. I don't feel any more cards here. The bottom of the deck is all about courage. The courage to go forward with Oh, look at that. There's two here. So the courage to go forward is important to you. But let's see what the other card is. Joy. It will lead you to joy. Maybe it's the courage to go forward with joy and find peace and harmony in your life through this wisdom of yours. Group number one, I send you lots of love from Australia. Bye. Welcome group number two. We want to talk about your mindset and see how we can change this mindset. What has happened to you? You have blockages when it comes to receiving messages from your spirit guides. Your mindset somehow causes these blockages. Let's learn more about number two. Same thing, divinity not connected fully. So this is due to a mindset. Wow, so that's really good to know. If you've ever thought of yourself as, look, I can't, I can't read cards properly or I can't connect to my guides, I don't feel anything, I don't see anything, I don't hear anything, there's just nothing happening. It's a mindset that is blocking this. So we can work on that because if it's a mindset, this is what we're here for to help you change this mindset. Yeah, it's to do with your emotions. Your emotions have caused this. There's been a lot of disappointment in your life. This disappointment is the reason why you have this mindset. Things just didn't go your way and then you felt like, oh my God, it's just not working for me. I'm just going to give up. Nothing is working. And slowly, over time, this doesn't happen overnight, but over time, you've accepted this and you, you said to yourself, well, that's, that's it. I just can't do it. Maybe that um, I can't do it has been a big part of your life. So let's learn... A little bit more. We're going to switch the cards now. What is it about your mindset? Why is that that you have these disappointments? It's, it's emotional experiences again. This is Archangel Raphael coming in. 
And it's all about the Ace of Raphael moving on from that, being guided to move on from that. We want to find out more about this. It's almost like a mystery around you. Group number two, it's really hard to tap into what is the problem? Why is your mindset like this? I know we, you've had a lot of disappointments there, but there must be a different reason. Okay, one reason is your friends, maybe from past lives as well, maybe from when you were younger. But there, I can see a group of friends, maybe that's family for you. And they were influential at making you feel that way. I can't do it because they might have been very successful. Well, so-called successful. They might have lied to you about their success. Or maybe they were a little bit more popular than you, but it didn't lead them to a good place. But back then, perhaps, maybe in your childhood or your teen years, you felt like, oh man, these these are the people that I wish I could be like them. And you might have admired them and really put yourself down and thought if I could be like that, I wouldn't have any issues in my life. But perhaps little do you realize now that these people have perhaps had negative lives and um, toxic relationships or things that have gone wrong in their life. But if you do meet them again, they might just be bragging about how good their life it their life is, but it's not true. This is something that is showing up the influence of others and your desire to perhaps be like them. Yes, yes, the same here in the chariot. It tells me the same thing that there is glitter and glamour and people have moved forward and you feel like you've been left behind. You have missed out on opportunities that you wanted and they just haven't presented themselves to you. But there's more opportunities. There are different ways. There, there's definitely more opportunity. If you have felt this way, group number two, I, I'm telling you that more opportunities are sitting there. They're being offered to you. They will be coming in. But if you're still locked into a mindset where you value other people's lives more than yours, you need to turn that around. Find something about your life that is really special and unique to you. Maybe you can draw or you can sing or you have some part of you that is very good at something that um, perhaps you, you, you're very good at decorating your home, you're very good at gardening. Find something that is good and look at that. Don't look at everyone else's things because I guarantee you that a lot of people lie to you about how their life is. I, I see a lot of people that are snobby and saying, yes, look, look at me. You know, I'm wearing the latest um, brand name clothing. Look at the car I'm driving. Look at the house I'm living in. And you're going, oh my God, I'm failing. Not at all, because there's something unique about you. But the first thing you need to do is stop thinking that there isn't. Because then your guides can come in, show you what is meant for you and how unique you actually are. And I will guarantee that if you change your mindset like that and look for new opportunities, that you will find a way that is much better than what you have admired about other people. Because what do you really want from this life? What do any of us really want? We want happiness, peace, joy. We want to be a giving soul, a loving soul, and we want to receive in the same manner that we give. But oftentimes we get disappointment in that area. And that is where we need to leave behind the people perhaps that we admire that are not really true to 
even themselves, they look in the mirror and the image that um, reflects back to them is completely different. So you don't want to be like that. You want to be that gentle, beautiful soul that has people around you that will be supportive of that. But people can't come in and support you unless you change your mindset and value what you are good at. Even if it's a small thing, think about that, value that, and then things will start changing. More opportunities. You're going to connect to your spirit guides a lot more. You're going to find that all of a sudden, maybe something you've been slightly good at now will open up big because you've changed your mindset. This is you. We're going to switch the cards again, but this is coming out for you, group number two. It's, it's not been easy for you. There's lots of emotional turmoil there. I can see you've all had different issues, traumas that have caused this. And um, people showing off in front of you uh, have certainly haven't helped. But this reading is here to tell you that what you saw when you looked at these people, it's, it's not all true. And you might have even made it greater in your mind looking at things through rose-colored glasses comes out. You are better than this and new opportunities will flow your way. There's a big thing about introspection, looking inside, looking at everything that is you. Maybe you haven't done that before. Maybe you have sat down and always admired somebody else, maybe even a teacher, a, a somebody who guided you a little bit in this life, and you've admired them, but you've never sat down and admired yourself. You, in meditation, need to do that. You have to have a session with yourself where you just admire yourself. You just got to be in love with you. That's your first step because you are a very lovable person. But if you don't feel that way, then it's hard for others to respect that about you. First of all, have many sessions where you just simply honor and love yourself. Let the divine guide you. Allow yourself to empty your mind and focus on source energy, on the divine, and say to that energy, guide me to the parts of me that are very lovable, that are very good, that I should admire, and allow your mind to drift to them a little bit. Don't focus on anyone else, but allow this mindset to to basically open up and wherever it takes you that belongs to you, that's an important part. Practice that. Have some fun with that. Bring joy back into your life because you will be given a lot more in the future. Sustenance. You may have just enough in this life. You may, might even be struggling a little bit, but that's not going to be your future once you love yourself. This is a lots about self-love and forgiveness. Whatever that means to you, there might be people in your life who you have to forgive. There might even be things you've done wrong and you've got to forgive yourself. Maybe that's part of why you find you are not lovable or there's a bad part about you. We all have a shadow aspect to ourselves. We need to embrace it, accept it, clear away the things we don't like and find the parts that we really do like. So it's always coming back. You can see the story gets to the same ending here, all about you loving yourself. And I actually don't feel any more cards. I wanted to get some more out here for you, but 
the reading is meant to point you into a different mindset, into understanding how much better life can be when we change that mindset. Group number two, I wish you all the best and send you lots of love from Australia. Bye. Welcome group number three, changing your mindset. What mindset are you stuck in? Okay, something has happened to you. When I look at these two cards, and you might get a different feeling, a different message from them, but I feel that you have been treated very cruel in your life. There is a lot of harsh energy here. Energy that has framed your mindset, that has perhaps altered your mindset to a great extent. But there's certainly what I see is like a framework around your mind and this new framework is trying to press in on you. Let's find out because it's all about tenderness, about expansiveness, but you can't feel that tenderness and you can't expand your energy because that tenderness has never been given to you. There are parts of you that are completely locked away. I can see through this card here, introspection, that Parts of you that want to surface can't. They literally can't come out because of what has happened to you. The first thing that you need to do to be able to thrive in this lifetime is acknowledgement. To acknowledge the things that have happened to you that are not part of you that are external things that have been placed on you. It's like when I said to you, I saw this, this framework around your own mindset. In meditation, I want you to go a little bit deeper here. This is a lot to do with um, emotions, mental issues. So inside your mind, I want you to see that. And when you meditate, see the framework and try and remove it like you're taking off a hat you're taking off something that is around your mindset and you are then burning it see the element of fire burn this and expand your own mindset because we've been looking at expansiveness that's that's what you need to do. You've certainly never had this tenderness in your life. So it's really hard for you to experience life in that way. But by removing what has been put there, what has broken your mind, we're rebuilding it. You are going to nurture yourself back into a healthy mindset. Let's learn a little bit more. And this gives me goosebumps, group number three. So some of you might have had a lot of trauma here. We're looking at finding your power again. This is where the power has been stolen. But with you, it's a little bit different because I see things when I do these readings. And what I see with you is that your power is actually there. People have tried to steal it and they might have succeeded at times, but it's come back to you. And then you thought to yourself, well, I want this power, but I want to hide it away. And that's where this frame has come in and restricted it. That might also be fear to express yourself, to even mention about your emotions, that you might need to express them to other people, to your partner. 
and you can't you feel like ah oh, no it's I better not say anything because I don't want to cause any issues and if that is the case you really need to bring them out when the time is right they need to be expressed according to how you actually feel not what you think another person would like to hear from you let's find out what else you can do to change that mindset healing a lot of healing comes in for you we want to find out more about this healing we're going to switch the cards and find out what else you can do because we know your background your guides have been trying to tell you that um, you are not your circumstances you are not the pain the trauma the issues that are residing around that mindset you are to do whatever you can in your personal um, circumstances to clear that trauma away, to use energy, to burn it, to use the element of water to wash that away, to use anything that is necessary. For some of you, you may need to go and see a therapist. For some of you, there may even be some medication you need to take for a short time maybe for more lengthier times but whatever it is however you are affected you need to to go and pursue that because you are powerful once this framework is removed nothing is going to stop you and i can also tell you that congratulations you will do that once you do that, you will then, as the card says, follow your passion. You are ready for any challenge. Challenges will become not such a big deal to you then. Because when we've been hurt, it's like we've got a bruise on our mind. And every time there's a small challenge that presses on that bruise that we've still got there, it's going to be sore. But if you allow the bruise to heal, well, if somebody then presses on that same spot, well, guess what? There's no bruising there anymore. Now it doesn't hurt so much. And you can then turn around and say, hey, take your finger off my mind because you're not allowed to be there. Slap that hand away. They're not allowed to be there. And the challenges will become easier. You will not look at life as if it's going to all collapse in on you. You will look at it and say, well, I'm not going to tolerate that. I'm not going to accept this. You might tell some people like, this is it, you need to go. You might say to yourself, even I've recently spoken to a lady and she said, look, Harry, I've always run away. I've had narcissists in my life and I've always been running. And she said, for the first time, I said to myself, well, I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to tell them to get out. Because once again, she had connected to another narcissist and was stuck. And she was saying to me, I think I should just pack up and run. And after a while, she said, no, I'm not doing that. And I thought, oh, good, energy work is working. She, she stayed. And now she has found a way to move the other party out. So this is something that you need to consider that if we're always running, we most likely will always run. But if there's something we can do to get rid of whoever is causing us to run, then that's empowerment. In some circumstances, it is wiser. I have to bring this in. It is wiser to leave, to move away. That is true. But for the sake of what's happening here in your mind, you are a little bit the opposite. You do not need to run, but you need to stand in your power. Because people may have, in many ways and situations, made you run. But don't, don't do that anymore. We're going to switch the cards around again and see what else is coming out for group number three. 
The reason you are asked to do that is because the vibration around you will change. And when you change that vibrational field around you, and the way we change it is through our mindset. Our mindset produces emotions. These emotions become layers that are within but also start building on the outside. Once these layers have built, that's when we give off a certain vibration that is based on these layers. Now, if the layers are full of trauma, then that's what will come into our life. If we haven't found at least one or two layers that we can draw on that are full of power and light, we will simply just be bombarded with whatever negative aspects these layers um, emit into the world because that will come back to you. So we need to work on your power. Whatever your mind puts out, this will come back in one way or another. Connect yourself to Mother Nature a lot. You can benefit greatly from Mother Nature being around any nature for you, even if it's a simple pot plant in the house that you regu regularly nurture, you might touch the soil, you might touch the plant, you might talk to the plant. Anything that has to do with nature is very beneficial for your mindset. Watch your desires. Desires can also cause us to keep that negative mindset going. Whatever that means in your life, I'll leave that up to you because certain desires can be misleading us. So watch that as part of a changed mindset that is surfacing here. You are meant to receive emotional stability. You're also meant to receive an abundance in life that hasn't presented itself yet. But through altering your perception, your mindset, this abundance is waiting there. It's sitting in your timeline because you need to connect more to your divinity, to who you are. Your emotions need a lot of healing and emotional healing for you is highly beneficial. We've seen that always protect yourself with energy, with the bubble of light and work on your emotions through meditation music, through perhaps, um, I see a lot of singing bowls around, so some of you might be using that vibration to heal your emotions. Whatever resonates, whatever helps you is the best way. They're suggesting also to put some passion into a project. Something that you are passionate about can help you heal emotions because you'll be focusing on it. You'll be putting good energy into it. Don't give up on those projects. Do them as good as you can and don't judge yourself too harshly because you need to build up your emotional well-being and through passionate projects, this is a possibility of great healing coming your way. I don't actually feel any more cards. Group number three, you know what's happening and how you can change your mindset. This may take some time depending on the severity of the trauma experienced in this current life. But there are a few suggestions that will help you get out of the current mindset and lead you into an abundant way of living, both physically and emotionally. Group number three, I wish you all the best and send you lots of love from Australia. Bye. Well, 
welcome group number four how can you change your mindset what is your mindset that's what we got to find out okay i want to um, get some more information because the first thing i see it's a mindset of a loving family there's a mother, father, children in the background. You wanted a loving family, perhaps. Let's find out a little bit more in regards to this. But you had to walk away. Your guides actually said, come, come, walk away from it. You had to leave behind things, things of value, maybe even money that you, you're looking at it in the trunk there, it's full of coins, but your guides are saying, walk away, leave it all behind, it doesn't need to be with you because it's tainted, it's um, perhaps dirty money, so to speak, and you don't want this in your life, and you had to leave behind a dream, a dream of a happy home, and this has affected your mindset greatly. But some of you have really come out of that. And you said to yourself, okay, I'm just going to do it on my own. I've got plans. I'm working on these plans. I'm uh, pursuing perhaps financial freedom. I'm doing it on my own. So I can't see the problem here yet. So we want to, but this is group number four. Hey, whoever is in group number four, we know there's always uh, a little bit of an unusual energy here. So what's wrong with group number four's mindset spirit? Not that I want to find anything wrong with it, but we are here to change that mindset. Okay, yes, I can see where we're heading. Because... Because of what has happened to you, you've become very strong. You have a mindset that is like power. It's just amazing power in it. You also are very protected. But there is something not quite right with this dramatic power that I'm seeing. But I know you're very protected in this here. I see all your guides around you and you have this, nothing is going to touch you. I think you've made it that way. Because of what happened to you in the past, you've now adopted this mindset of, I'm doing it on my own and I did it and welcome to my world here, I, I relate to you. But you've built this mindset of perhaps a bit of stubbornness there as well. Let's learn more about this. What's spirit wanting you to do? They want you to understand something. They really want you to understand something. Uh, you might get a different message from this card, but when I look at it, I feel that your spirit guides are there. They want you to look at something. And the card says, take great pride in your excellent work. And I know that that's what you're doing. You're, you're taking great pride in where you're going and how you have achieved things for yourself. But there might be something that you need to consider. You need to soften this, this um, energy field around you a little bit. So we looked at this energy. That is you currently. That's your mindset. And I just want you to see the card to feel it. Then we are shifting it all around and this in the Queen of Michael, what I'm seeing is a little bit of a different mindset. It is softer, it is feminine compared to the masculine energy that we've seen in the King of Gabriel. So let's find out um, why that is the case. I mean, it's self-explanatory in the fact that if we have this harsher mindset because of necessity, we had to build it up. Perhaps we also then don't open ourselves up to anything that will actually benefit us because we're thinking of our what's going to happen next. I don't want to have any people in my life. You know, I'm, I'm done with people. I'm just running away from that. But there's something about that. Let's find out. Let's pull some more cards. 
Yes, it's true. Um, you are to, there's two things. You are to open up to people and uh, to soften that energy field around you. But another thing is that, explaining it is, is a little bit difficult but what I'm feeling is that you don't even allow yourself any joy or pleasure or not enough of it in your life what is coming in is that do what you love in this card here but it feels like that you always have your mind set on the next project on being productive in one way or another just sitting and doing nothing is almost impossible for some of you but that's exactly what your guides are trying to tell you that if you feel guilty about just having a day off just doing nothing don't feel guilty because you need to soften that mindset. You don't always have to be on the go to achieve great things. Oftentimes it's the opposite. We achieve great things when we allow ourselves to breathe. That's what's coming out. And go for nature walks. Go and discover things in nature. Nature has a wealth of abundance in one form or another that can help you in your life. You just got to tap into that form of abundance. Maybe these are daily walks for you that are very important to you to help soften that mindset. We want to know a little bit more about group number four. And take other people with you. Go for walks with other people. Allow yourself to open up. Talk to other people that when you're out there walking, you might meet somebody. Say hello to them. Open your energy field up. Or if they say hello... Um, ask them a question. Allow the conversation to unfold if it will. Don't be the one that stops it. Let's find out how... You, oh, so that wanted to come out here. There, this, in this card, I see the same energy. This man here, he's out in nature and his guide is behind him saying, look, you're doing really, really well. Congratulations, you're out in nature. Take the afternoon off and just enjoy your surroundings. And he's going, oh my God, I've wasted time. I've spent too much time here. Now I don't feel like doing anything else. But your guide was saying to you, well, that's exactly what we wanted for you, that you don't want to do anything else because it's not good for you. It's not good for your energy. Your mindset has to change. Even though you have had expectations and you've done really well, I mean, group number four, where you've come from and how you've come out of the situation and where you have taken yourself and perhaps some family members is is just amazing but if you remain in this harsh mindset that's also not going to be good for your future it's not a huge problem but you could have it easier and better and that's what your guides want you to focus on to allow yourself to turn off that um, active mind you will get to the task when it is necessary but not before that and that's a good concept you will get to it when it's necessary but not before that if you're like me you want to do it two weeks before that and then you want to cram in other things and my guides have always been saying no slow it down and this is you as well because you can achieve more by slowing it down yeah look at that insights that come from quiet meditation the need perhaps for more sleep or time off seek relief from stress if you're going through a particularly stressful time don't add to it we often have the habit of doing that of adding to the stress but if you can say ah that's it i'm calling it quits this afternoon i'm going out i'm enjoying myself i'm going 
wherever, perhaps in nature, but wherever really, wherever you like to help with stress relief, to look after yourself and not to perhaps take on the responsibility of the situation. Because I'm, I'm hearing that when you try and perhaps fix something all the time, it's always going to fall back on you. But if you simply packed up and you said to everybody, well, just sort it out yourselves. Don't count on me this afternoon. I'm not sorting your messes out anymore. And try and switch that mind off, enjoy yourself and then come back you'll find that things around you, even within your own home, will change. But it's not an easy thing to do, especially for you, Group 4, because you're so used to it. You are that person that everybody comes to and says, um, you need to fix my problem, you need to give me money so I can survive, and nobody ever says, can I help you to fix an issue can I give you some money so that you can survive? And nobody ever says that to you. So this is where you want to bring more of that in, more where people will be helpful rather than take, take and take again from you. That's the only place where your mindset has to change. I want to switch the cards up for you, group number four, because I feel very connected to this group. Okay, you you are to be commended for the commitment that you have had to solving many, many challenges in your life. Spirit, once again, is coming in and saying, wow, what you've done is amazing. You certainly have an inner authority. You might have this inner authority and strength, but maybe... You find it hard to use that inner authority when it comes to laying down the law, setting boundaries. If you have changed your life, you've come out of all of this and you're now here, think to yourself, I do have this inner authority. I can set strong boundaries. You have come so far. Now keep it going. Your mindset needs to be one of self-love, of using this inner authority because you have the strength, you have the power, but maybe there's a little bit of a blockage there. Follow your own desires, group number four. Don't let other people stop you from that. Don't put them first all the time. It's about your desires. Otherwise, we go through life and we always do everything for everyone else. And our needs are hardly ever met. The rest of your life is meant to be a life of fulfillment, joy, pleasure, happiness in what, whatever form this comes in because you're the creator of that happiness. Some of us like to travel and that's what happiness is. Having a good home life, perhaps like you wanted in the beginning, but for others it's pursuing other things. I'm a homebody. I love being at home. I love uh, spending time with my daughter. We enjoy going for walks. We even like to do um, different puzzles. Anybody that likes to do puzzles, join the club. We like watching movies. We like doing things together. We have a very close bond and we are each other's best friend and so that is something that brings me great joy and I really hope it brings my daughter great joy as well but this is what you need to determine what is it in your life that brings you joy just because somebody likes traveling doesn't mean that that is for you or just because somebody doesn't like it and wants to be at home and you like to go traveling you have to find the person that will be there for you to support you in that or maybe it's enough you are enough and you like to travel by yourself meet new people this is up to each and every one of you how you see fulfillment joy and happiness but be mindful to find true soul satisfaction never sit and think to yourself well 
I can't do anything. I just don't have the money. I can't go here, can't go there. Find something that you can do and be joyful about because then that joy will slowly and progressively expand. All of a sudden you get a bonus from work and you can go and travel. But if you had not been joyful with something small and built on that, the energy field wouldn't have been created. The desire wouldn't have been created. There would have only been victimhood and maybe a lot of whinging you know when we get into that mood I've been in that mood the other day and I'll be like this is it you know everything is bad and I don't know what to do and then my guide said to me Harry what are you doing <laughs> and I had to quickly do some energy clearing and everything settled back down but you, you know what I'm saying we get ourselves in these moods because Sometimes there's fluctuations in even planetary energy that can really affect me and perhaps you're the same. And all of a sudden we become cranky, but that's not normally us. Identify where this comes from. Try and understand that it's not you sometimes. It's just an unhealed part that surfaces and go with it. Let it out, but then do something joyful. Group number four, I wish you all the best and send you lots of love from Australia. Bye. <music>